Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you some specific things that you can do to actually profit from this market crash that we seem to be involved in. Let's call it the great toilet paper run of 2020. And as I've said before, you know, I think this whole coronavirus thing is being blown completely out of proportion, but the fact of the matter is that all the fear and all the panic and all the businesses closing and all the people staying home because of this media panic is causing the market to crash and probably it's only going to get worse before it gets better. So this video will help prepare you for what's to come. Okay, now before we get started, I know there's one of you that's watching this thinking, oh, it's so terrible to profit off of tragedy. Well, before we get into it, let me tell you that no, it's not terrible to profit off of tragedy. In fact, it's very, very socially useful to profit off of tragedy. If there was nobody that profited off of tragedy, uh, when your grandma died, you'd have to dump her body in a landfill or something, right? There wouldn't be somebody to make the coffin, there wouldn't be somebody to do a funeral ceremony, there wouldn't be a cemetery, right? The fact that there are people who profit off of tragedy makes the tragedy less tragic. That's how you profit off of tragedy, is to make it less tragic. And the same applies here. The way that we're going to profit off of this market crash is by helping the people who are affected by it. So, I don't want to hear your complaining. Okay, let's get into it. The first way that you can profit from a market crash is to learn marketing. Well, really, it's better to already know marketing, but better late than never. Let me show you why this is so important with a little illustration here. So, in a regular economy, you have your providers over here in whatever industry, right? This could be pretty much any industry, any normal industry. You have the people that are providing the service, and then you have your customers. Now, because there are so many more customers than providers, all the providers get their fill of business, and the providers don't have to struggle that much in order to find customers, because there are a lot of customers out there, and they all need to find a provider. Okay, so what happens when the, the market crashes? Well, what happens is the number of providers stays the same, right? I'm trying to make that circle the same size. This is the recession here. Uh, that's the number of providers, but the number of customers shrinks, right? People have less money to spend. People are saving. People are a little bit worried about spending money um, because they're not sure where their next paycheck is going to come from. People lose their jobs, etc. So the number of customers gets smaller. So what does that mean for the providers? Well, what that means is they don't have it as easy anymore. They have a smaller pool of customers and the competition among the providers becomes more fierce. So, what that means is that the providers who have the best marketing are the ones who get the customers. And the providers who don't keep up with the, with the marketing, uh, they're out of luck. Right? So, if you can be the person who helps the providers get to the customers, if you can be the marketing person, well, your service is is a matter of life and death for their companies, so they will value you highly. It's how I got my start and I highly recommend it, so check out the link below if you're interested in that. By the way, if you're finding this video helpful or informative, I would very much appreciate if you would hit the thumbs up icon because it makes the YouTube algorithm like me better, hit the subscribe button, and hit the little bell icon beside the subscribe button because that means you'll be the first to get all my new videos. And if you can think of another way that you can profit from this situation that I forgot to mention in this video, then let everybody know in the comments. It'll be a great help for everybody. Okay, now the second way that you can profit from this crash is to invest. Warren Buffett famously said that when other people are being greedy, you should be fearful. And when other people are being fearful, that's the time to be greedy. So in other words, when other people are buying into a stock or a bond or a, a Bitcoin or whatever it is, um, that's a good time to recognize that the market is o getting overinflated. When people are enthusiastic about something, that's a time for you to get out because the, the price is going up, or the price is at a high point. Um, but when everybody's fearful, when everybody's selling off, when everybody's uncertain, that's a good time for you to buy in. That's the time for you to be greedy. And so when there's a market recession, especially at the beginning of it, there's a lot of fear and asset prices are low. Now, the point we are in our economic history is something that we have never seen before, ever. And I'm going to show you why that is. Now, if you go into Google and just Google S&P 500, and it'll show you the chart of the, the prices of the S&P 500, which is the American stock market, 
over time, and the whole world basically follows this trend, right? Where the US goes, the world goes. So you can look at the trend over time, um, and I'm gonna show you, I'm not gonna screen share, but I'll show you the basic uh, how this trend looks. So it starts in like the 1970s, and you get this like gradual going up, and then it go, starts going up faster. These are like the 1990s, and then 2001, it crashes. And then it starts going up again, and then 2008, it crashes. And then it starts going up like this, right? And then this is, this is 2020. So this is 01, this is 08, and this is 2020. And then this is right now. It's just, it's gone down to like to here, right? So what's going on here is that we had this, this slow and steady growth throughout most of our history. And you know, if you went back before 1970, you would, you know, you'd see that back further. Um, but then, in this period in the 90s is when people started getting all enthusiastic about the internet stocks, right? This was like the dawn of the internet and people were investing a whole bunch of money in these stocks. And then um, in 2001, the market crashed and then we had a big recession. Well, if you ask most people, like right after 2001, what the problem is, like why, what happened here, it's just, they would say it's just that people got too excited about the internet and that so they invested too much money in it, which we know in hindsight, that's not a very good explanation because it turned out that internet thing uh, was a pretty big deal, right? After, after 2001, everybody said, oh, we lost our heads about this internet thing. It wasn't really that big after all. Well, this internet thing was that big. We know that now. But what happened, what's the, like, the common thread here, is that during the 90s, the, the Fed was printing a whole bunch of money. So I'll write that on our chart here. So Fed printing money. I don't expect you to be able to read that. Anyway, so the Fed printed money, which means that the Fed came up with all this new money and they started loaning it to the banks at very low interest rates. And then the banks would loan that new money to businesses at very low interest rates. And then businesses would buy stuff. They'd buy buildings, they'd buy machines, and they'd pay for new workers and stuff. Um, and then, you know, all that new money in the market, like, flooded into the stock market. And people were, were bit like, the, the fad at the time was the tech stocks. So everybody pumped up the tech stocks. And then uh, the Fed stopped pumping money in 2001 or thereabouts, and the market crashed. Okay, so guess what happened after that? Well, the market crashed, so the Fed thought, So the Fed printed a whole bunch more money, and created this big bubble, and um, this time, the a lot of the investment went into real estate, right? People were a little bit afraid of the, of the, the tech stocks because of what had just happened a few years earlier, so even though the Fed was doing the same thing, the money got diverted into real estate. And then in the way, the Fed finally allowed interest rates to rise, which they need to do eventually, right? Because otherwise you get hyperinflation. Um, so then they, they raised interest rates, the market crashed again. So what do you think the, the, the Fed did after that? Same thing. Fed printing money. And this time they printed a lot of money like a crazy, unprecedented amount of money. They've printed more money probably in the last 10 years than they've printed in all the rest of history combined. The, the amount of money printing they did was insane. So here we are at this like massive, never before seen uh, high in the stock market. And the, the low, if you look at the low point in after the, the 01 crash, about here, the 08 crash is about the same point, right? So here we are, we crashed a little bit here, but if it crashes all the way, we could be going all the way down here, right? So I tell you that because I don't think it's a good time to buy stocks right now. I mean, I really hope that it doesn't do this because this is gonna be extremely painful if it does, uh, but you know, from, from everything I know and everything I've seen, it's definitely possible. So I don't recommend stocks, buying into the stock market right now. However, 
with the recession, it does bring certain opportunities. So, of course, if the if the market does crash all the way down to here, then that's the time that you start buying stocks. But until then, there's still opportunities. One opportunity that I like is gold. I own some gold, and gold has actually taken a hit recently. Uh, with the with the market going down, gold has also gone down, and the the explanation for that is that. People want liquidity, that is, they want cash. And one of the easiest ways they can get cash is to just sell their gold holdings. So I think that's going to happen a little bit, but I think that's going to bottom out and that's going to start going up pretty soon because gold has always been seen as a hedge against the market. So the weaker the market is, usually the, the stronger gold is. The same thing is true with, with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Again, I have some Bitcoin, and I think that's a good bet because um, the weaker the market is and probably the weaker the dollar gets. And especially if they, you know, if they start with the, the printing money again, the dollar is going to get weaker. And that will bode very well for gold and Bitcoin. Same thing with silver. So I'm not any sort of like finance genius. You know, I know a little bit. I went to school for economics. So take my opinion with a grain of salt. But definitely... There are going to be some huge investment opportunities. I think there are some now and there's going to be more. The, the worse this gets, the more opportunities there will be for people that have the cash on hand to actually pay for it. Okay, now the third thing that you can do to profit from this is to take this time to learn. If you're stuck at your home, if you're stuck in quarantine, if you can't get out of the house, or if you lose your job, or even if your job shifts to letting you work from home, right? that still gives you a lot of extra time because now you don't have to commute to and from work, that's like an hour or two extra a day that you have to dedicate to something, and you can dedicate that to something productive. So my recommendation is you find something productive to learn. I already told you why you might want to learn marketing, so absolutely get on that if that's the right track for you. If you're not sure what you want to learn, if you're not sure really what you want to do with your life, check out this last video that I did that will give you an awesome exercise to figure that out. But if you need something to start, but if you want something to start, um, I have a course called Digital Nomad University, which you might be interested in. I'll put a link in the description below, which shows you how to make money from home or from a laptop wherever you want and be able to travel the world. Now, with this whole coronavirus thing and all the quarantines and stuff, more than ever, companies are letting their employees work from home. And I know this is only temporary, but I believe that the companies are going to start recognizing that working from home doesn't end their business, that it actually works out pretty well, right? Because now they don't have to pay for an office building. Now they don't have to pay for coffee for all their employees. So I think the amount of work from home jobs is about to explode. I think that's what's happening right now. And so Digital Nomad University will show you how to take advantage of that. So if you want to learn how to make money on the road, travel the world, take advantage of the super low cost of living around the world, um, be able to travel in such a way that you actually get to enjoy the places that you stay instead of like going for a week and then having to come back home because you have to go to work. Well, check out that course. I think you'll love it. But of course, there are a million other things you can learn that are productive too, right? You can learn to code, you can learn to do graphic design, right? There are a million different skills that you can learn that'll serve you really well in the modern economy. Okay, now the fourth way that you can profit from this situation is that you can provide emergency services or the sort of services that people buy more of when they have less money. So let me give you a really cool example of this. Um, my mom makes her full-time income from owning houses. Right? Over the years, she invested her money into houses, and now she owns a bunch of houses, and she rents them out. Now, in the 2008 uh, housing crash, all of her house value went down like crazy. Right? She lost like 40% of her home value. But, at the same time, the amount of money that she was getting paid in rent actually went up. Because, I'll show you what happened. Um, so, pre-2008, you had, these were the uh, homeowners, and these were the renters. Excuse my handwriting there. And then after 08, you had a whole bunch of people lost their houses, right? The, the mortgage interest rates went up, 
and at the same time a bunch of people lost their jobs so a bunch of people were, were forced out of their houses so the number of owners went like this got a lot smaller and of course those those former home owners that got kicked out of their houses well they had to live somewhere right so what do you think they did they rented of course so all of a sudden you had a small amount of homeowners and a ton of renters well what that means what that meant is that there are a whole bunch more people that were renting the limited supply of houses so because there was so much extra demand the price that is the rent actually went up so the people that owned houses that were renting them out actually made more money as a result of the crash. And so you can do the same thing this time around. And if you invest in real estate, <clears throat> actually there's a, there's like a double effect here. There's a compound effect because for one thing, the house prices are going to go down <clears throat> and people have less money than some of them are going to sell their houses to get the money out of them, to get the equity out. And other people, are going to have to move out of their houses because they can't afford the mortgage anymore. So there are going to be a lot of houses on the market. People are going to have less money to buy houses. So the housing prices is almost definitely going to go down. So you could buy a house at a lower price than normal and there's going to be more renters on the market. So you could buy at a lower price and get a higher amount of rent for it. So there's a big opportunity right there at the moment or at least there probably will be in the near future. And that's only one of many different services that people are more likely to use if they have less money. Which brings me to the fifth way that you can profit from this crash, and that is by selling a service that saves people money. Now, when I, the first kind of successful business that I got started was doing IT consulting. I was a freelance IT consultant creating fancy spreadsheets for companies and I would make these spreadsheets that would that would do things automatically and they you know there's back-end coding that you can do in spreadsheets so you can push a button and it will do like an hour worth of work for you in like 30 seconds it's pretty cool and so what I was doing is I was saving companies a whole bunch of work time and of course if they have work time that means they have to pay people to do that work and if they don't have to pay people to do that work, they save a whole bunch of money. So what I was doing, <clears throat> they were paying me money, but I would save them a lot more money than they were paying me. And so during normal times, the companies might not be all that focused on saving money. They're more focused on expanding their business, right? And saving a few pennies here and there isn't a big deal for them. But when a, in a contracting economy in a recession, companies are a lot more careful about sending, saving money. So if you have a, a product or service that can save them money over the long term, then they're going to be a lot more interested now because that's what they're focused on. And even if your product or service doesn't directly save money, if you can figure out some way to position it that shows that maybe indirectly it saves money, then that's a good bet. For example, if you're like a health and nutrition coach of some sort, you could say, okay, yeah, you have to pay me now, but think about all the money that you're going to save on medicine, right? Because you're not going to get sick. All the money that you save on hospital bills because you're not going to have to go to the hospital. Uh, all the money that you're going to save on health insurance. Maybe, maybe provide it to business teams, right? So they can save money on their employees' health insurance if their employees are healthier. So whatever it is that you provide, if you can frame it in terms of this will save you money, then it will be a much easier sell to the customer because money seems scarce so spending a little bit of money to save a lot of money seems like a good bet. Okay, now the last way that you can profit from this situation is that you can profit spiritually. And I know that whenever I talk about anything spiritual, there's always one guy that goes and hits the thumbs down. So if that's you, then go do your thing. But this is the most important thing to me, so I'm not going to just ignore it. Jesus said, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his own soul? Your spiritual profit, so to speak, your spiritual improvement, your spiritual evolution is much more important than the material gain that you make on the earth. And uh, I'm not against making money at all, as you've probably noticed by now. I think making money is a wonderful thing, and the more money you have, the more good you can do in the world. So you can use that money to actually help your spiritual progress, which is a wonderful thing, but you have to realize that the money is just a tool. 
right? The money or whatever you want on this earth, whatever pleasures for your physical body that you want while you're on this earth, it's just temporary and it's just a tool and it's all going to be gone after you die. The whole point of being on this earth in the first place, the whole point of having this body is that it's a training ground for improving you spiritually, to serve you in your spiritual life, which is much longer than your physical life. We live in a world with hardship. We live in a world where there are bad things that happen. We live in a world with a lot of difficult times, and there's a reason for that. We have those difficult times to shape us spiritually, the same way that a, that a sculptor uh, shapes a statue with a chisel and a hammer, right? We're being hammered and chiseled. That's why we go through these difficult times is so that we can become more perfect, that we can become better. And whatever happens, however bad this gets, there's going to be a lot of opportunities for our improvement. There's going to be a lot of people who are suffering around us. That gives us a lot of opportunity to do charity, to make other people's lives better. We might suffer ourselves, and that gives us an opportunity to, set, to have faith, to look up to God, to recognize our life as this vast spiritual experience, not this tiny little 80 years on earth. And so, instead of whining, instead of complaining, instead of curse God and die, as Job's so-called friends told him to do, we keep our eyes to heaven, and instead of complaining, we say, thank you for this opportunity to do good. Thank you for this opportunity to get our spiritual evolution. This is an opportunity for us to get rid of our pride, for us to develop our humility. It's an opportunity for us to practice our patience, to practice our resignation. And it's an opportunity to get closer than ever before with the people around us who may be in need, who may need our help, or we may need their help. And of course, this is an opportunity to practice our perseverance. And that's what the whole message of what I'm saying here is all about, that if we recognize this hard time as an opportunity, instead of some sort of curse or affliction, then we can benefit from it in many different ways. Now, I know when I talk about this stuff, it's never as popular as all the, you know, quick fixes to make money. But one thing that I really, really would ask you to consider is consider the, the longer term, right? If I tell you how to make money in three days using Facebook, like everybody loves that video, but what really matters is our spiritual life, right? Everything on this earth is going to pass away. So just think about that. Think about what matters in the grand scheme of things and, and make that your primary goal and then everything that you're doing in the short term, whether it's to make money or whatever else it is, make that support your long-term goal that's going to support your spiritual growth. Now, if you feel like you need more clarity about what your overall goal in life is, what would really make you happy and fulfilled, I recommend you check out this video where I show you a simple exercise that can help you do just that. And of course, as always, hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell icon beside the subscribe button, and I will see you guys later.